Important story we're covering this morning. A recent article in Nature highlighting an unfortunate side effect of the pandemic. Some babies born in the past two years are missing developmental milestones. It's easier to understand why there are ways to offset the so called development dip in your child. Joining us live this morning with tips is the president of Programs for Brain Balance Achievement uh, Centers, and that is Dr. Rebecca Jackson. Good morning. Good morning. So tell us about the developmental dip. What does that exactly mean? Uh, some of the milestones that babies are not necessarily hitting? Exactly. Research is showing that babies born during the pandemic are often testing behind in some foundational areas of development. And some of the main areas that we're seeing this impact is gross motor development, fine motor development, and communication. All foundational development pieces that impact development going forward. So if they don't have those things moving forward, what, how are they impacted ne negatively? We can see delays in major milestones, such as sitting, crawling, walking. Fast forwarding several years, these foundational pieces lead to more complex development, like our abilities to have higher thinking processes, attention and focus, impulse control. So these are foundational developmental milestones. So obviously there are parents of newborns at home right now and they're probably really worried about hearing this. So can you help them out? What are some of the ways we can get them back on track? Is one of them getting outside? Getting outside is one of the simplest, most powerful tools we have at our disposal. Our kids have experienced less in the way of sensory exposure and movement over the last two years because we've changed so much of how we function. So exploring your neighborhood parks, getting kids outside and around other people beyond just your immediate family, even if it's at a distance, can be a really important sensory experience to help engage and activate these key areas of the brain. You know, I noticed this in my younger son, who's now two and a half, but he was just about five months when we went into lockdown. And so naturally we had to limit our social circles. We weren't going places. And I noticed that he was becoming a little shy. So how do we reverse some of these things? You know, finding ways that you feel safe to interact and expose your kids to people in different environments. Something as simple as bringing your kids along when you run errands, going to the grocery store, going to Target. That's oftentimes when we're not in close contact with people, but you're seeing a lot of different people in ages and faces and sensory experience. And then that close circle, having times and opportunities to interact face-to-face -face with people outside of your immediate family is so key for those developing brains. A lot of parents are working from home right now. They're with their babies all day long, but as we mentioned, they're working. Is being in the same room enough or you need that face-to-face -face contact? Being in the same room is good. Face-to-face -face is so much better. And all of us right now are multitasking and juggling more than ever, especially when we were back in juggling school from home and younger siblings. So taking time to set aside devices and single task focus on your kids of all ages is really important. That face-to-face -face time, babies mimic and mirror you. So that close contact with expression is, again, a key piece for helping foundational development. You know, that's so true. When I look at my younger son and I, I smile, I notice that he mimics that and he immediately smiles. So how can we create more opportunities to have, you know, time with our babies without the distractions like technology or other siblings? Because in my house, I also have a five-year-old, so it's hard to carve out that one-on-one -on -one time. The beautiful thing is that one-on-one -on -one time doesn't need to be a two-hour chunk of time. Even five, ten minutes of quality face-to-face -face time can have a huge impact. So if you wake up a few minutes early in the morning and set everything aside, start your day with some face-to-face -face contact, it will benefit both the parent as well as the child. So finding those moments throughout the day to intersperse that and work that in of just those moments of quality connection. So there's one thing that really hasn't changed in my life. I love playtime. I loved it when I was a baby. I love playtime right now. You say that's so critical for child development? It is. Our sensory systems and our muscles and movement is two of the biggest pieces that drive development. And so moving and engaging our muscles and different sensory exposure. So if you're down on the floor wrestling and playing, you're doing both sensory input as well as muscles. I love getting the kids barefoot and having them run around outside. That difference between going from grass to concrete to dirt to the beach if you, if you live near sand, all of that is providing a really rich sensory experience in a really safe environment as long as it's not freezing cold outside.
Well, it's a really important topic. Really good tips. Thank you so yeah. much for joining us this morning. For more on Dr. Jackson, visit brainbalancecenters.com or find her on Facebook.